what's up boutique babies welcome back to sharon's nail boutique and welcome back to another watch me work video in this video i'm actually doing this set on my daughter and i think this set came out amazing i love how it turned out and so did she so i'm just going in here now with my cuticle bit and i'm going in at the slowest speed on my drill that it allows me to which is about 3000 rpms 2500 so I'm just going to go in on all 10, but I've left in just, I believe, maybe I did leave in all 10. Who knows? I know I just did the same color on all 10 nails. So I just did one hand in the video for you all because I didn't want it to get repetitive and take up too much of your time. Because I wanted you all to see the hand drawn nail art and me placing those little half back pearls that she wanted. So again welcome back if you are already a subby of mine and if you are not a subby of mine i would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed and like this video share if you don't mind you don't have to though um it really helps me out a lot and i am trying to get back into youtube at least a few times a week getting back into the groove of things so it's been a long run where i felt like just blah and meh so I'm trying to get back into the groove of things and hopefully slowly but surely or quicker, but I'm just taking it day by day. So I'm going in now and cleaning the nail surface of these nails and getting all the dust and debris off so I can size her tips and get them glued on. And it didn't take very long. I think all told this set took about three hours and 15 minutes from start to finish. And that's because mainly I like to take my time and there's times I even take longer than that. It just depends on how long the nails are, what we're doing for art and stuff like that. So I think the quickest set I've ever done is an hour and 40 minutes. But I'm going in here and just taking a little tiny bit off the sides because we're doing a tapered square. And I'm coming in now with my Nail Sunshine 100 150 grit hand files just removing the shine from the tip surface and blending that free edge tip line where you glue the tip on so i kind of blend that in a little bit not too too much because you don't want it like blended into the nail you just kind of want to take off a little bit of the bulk and that's it and i'm just resizing them making sure that they are tapered like she wanted them making sure that they are crisp and flat across the free edge nice and straight and i will move on to putting on the opi bond aid and the no lift nails acid base primer and then we will go in with our acrylic application and i am using i believe i'm using my mccart pinky promise from their their new acrylic pro line it's not that new but it's newer so here's my opi bond aid i actually have to get more of this and i use an acid base primer i've always found that this combination helps the best my clients nails stay on for weeks and weeks and weeks so yeah when i first started i did me a secret and i think one other one nail nails dehydrant and me a secret primer it just didn't work for me even with just using the um dehydrant and primer for me a secret it just for me i found that it just didn't work all that good compared to opi bond aid and then no lift nails acid base primer so with the acid base you want to wait till it's dry it has like a chalky finished look to the surface and then with acid lists you can go in while it's still a little damp on the surface and that gives you your best adherence so yep just make sure you're following those directions on your products because that will give you your best results and usually when you're using the same brand products it's usually best however i like i said i found with the opi bond aid and the no lift nails acid base primer that my clients nails stay on <laughs> like they actually sometimes beg me to help them take them off because they've been on for so long so i try to always use products that give my clients the 
as permanent of a finish as possible, you know? Because it's nothing worse than getting your nails done and then popping off right away or within a couple days, few days. So I remember the first few weeks when I first started doing nails, I think I had that issue for maybe a couple weeks. And then I found this combination. I've been using it ever since. I found if you find something that works, don't change it, you know? So once I'm happy with how this looks, I'm just adding a tiny bit to areas where it's a little bit kind of translucent and not built up evenly. So I think I might add a tiny bit to that top portion. Yeah, just a little, little bit. And then I move on. So I just drain the back of my bead ever so slightly. And then I go in with my first bead at that natural free edge area. And then I come in with my cuticle bead afterwards. So I'm building these nails up in like two, three beads, depending. I mean, sometimes I add a fourth, depending on how even it looks. Sometimes I have to add more to, you know, build it up properly and give it its strength. And these aren't super long, so you don't need too, too much thickness. <clears throat> so I drain liquid out of the back of my beads to get the product to stay up where I place it. Because otherwise, it'll be running all over the nail and you'll be trying to catch it all over the place. So I add another little bead to the free edge area to blend it back into that cuticle bead as well <clears throat> then I might add one more tiny tiny cuticle bead to blend into that one so I don't like you know the to me the free edge should be thinner than the cuticle area like where the stress point is not so much like the back cuticle area but where the top third strength area of your nail is that should be a bit thicker than all the areas of the nail the sides and then the free edge itself so just making sure you're turning your brush on the angle when you get to those side walls and the back area now i'm happy with that i'll blend that back a little bit add a tiny bit to that area there because it was missing okay move on and same thing just repeating this process on all 10 nails and i will come in with my nail art at the end and we are actually doing marble nails using my beetles gel liners i'm doing marble nails on four out of the ten pointer and ring on one hand and the middle and the pinky on the other and then on the other three we're doing the white french and then at the very end, we come in on all the Frenchies with three halfback pearls. Some are like medium size and then some a tiny size. And I've had these halfback pearls for a while now. They come in all sizes and colors. They're so pretty. And uh, she actually got this inspiration from a set that she saw, I think on Pinterest or Instagram. Um, and it had the same like pearl design on the background of the Frenchies. So. I actually thought this set was super cute and I really enjoyed doing it for her and she loved how they came out so I wanted to share them with you all because I thought you would like the process. And Let me know if there's anything you would like to see from me. I am, like I said, starting to get back into the groove of things so I'll be putting up quite a few videos coming up shortly. Um, I'm also doing a swap of Queen's Nails. I have to look up her, her name again because she changed it. Um, but if you're watching this, I am making the swaps now. I think it's Queen of Bling and Beauty. But I have to look it up. Yeah, so I joined her birthday group swap and they're due on September 30th. So I'm making a few of those. I think it's a five by five by five. So I'm doing six. And yeah, it's gonna be fun and I can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with. I'm doing two mixes, I believe, for my swap because I'm doing like a Mickey and Minnie theme. So 
I hope everyone likes it who gets mine. And I can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with. Like I said, I can't. I have missed doing swaps for so long. It's been a long time since I've done a swap, so I'm excited. But yeah, I'm just finishing up the acrylic application and then we'll start coming in with our nail art and we'll file, well, we'll file before that. Um, and we'll reshape our edges and buff. We'll use our mandrel bit to actually file instead of doing our hand file, which is a change for me. So let me know what you guys think of this set. And I know I sound a little kind of down today. I'm not my like normal chipper self, but bear with me. I will be getting back into it. Don't worry. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about this set and what you'd like to see from me next. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments below. And I always respond back to you guys. So I look forward to hearing from you and I will see you in my next one, y'all. Bye.
Thank you.